dear dear students welcome you to this uh, facilitation period again we want to consider in this period the importance of mathematics curriculum development in mathematics and selection of goals and objectives as you have heard before my name is dr ss afolab the department of science education national university of nigeria Abuja. Now, the importance of mathematics in relation to other subjects and professions. We all know that we have been learning mathematics from our primary school, secondary school, and here you are, you have come to specialize in the teaching of mathematics. So, we concluded our last facilitation period with the assignment given to you to find out some great mathematicians in the 20th century and in our contemporary days in and outside Nigeria. I hope that you have explored some of this. We shall have time later in future to share your contributions. The subject of this day is to consider and share together the importance, the relevance or the use of uh, mathematics one to other subject areas in the various professions and totally generally in life. Now the use of mathematics. Which subject area do you know that does not use mathematics? How does the following career make use of mathematics? And which concept of mathematics do they make use? Yes, consider some careers do they make use of mathematics? What concept of mathematics do they make use of? For, for, for instance, a language teacher, then economics, biology, chemistry, fine and applied arts, history, literature and English, and so on. In what way do they make use of mathematics for these subjects? And then, which concept of mathematics do they make use of? There, this profession, a chemist, a surveyor, a painter, artist, a pilot, driver, architect, lawyer, medic, doctor, musician, footballer. Do they make use of mathematics? What kinds of mathematics do they make use of? There, generally in life, how does and housewife make use of mathematics? While working, while running, perhaps while eating, do you make use of mathematics? Think about all this. Let's now consider curriculum development in mathematics in Nigeria. I want to see the, the pre colonial era. Now, this time, just uh, at the pre colonial era, various natives, villagers, Africans in their own nations and tribes make use of crude mathematics. And actually, they were able to count their properties and record perhaps by making tallies or keeping stones and uh, pebbles. So, they used all these to learn and keep their records. Now, immediately before and immediately after the colonial era, what type of mathematics do we learn in our schools? What are the characteristics of the, the content of mathematics then? How, 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 how does it look like in the first instance? They learn mathematics in three parts. The, 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 the colonial masters, they introduced this arithmetic, algebra, and geometry. And so, that's what you are learning. These three aspects. The textbooks available then, we are foreign. Understand that this will contain foreign examples, foreign illustrations, not local language that we can easily understand. Then, Thirdly, the existence of additional mathematics. 
for those who will study science, engineer, and those who will major in mathematics. The pedagogy was characterized with poor teaching methods. There was that mythology that mathematics was meant for the gifted few. And that's and that a problem. Whereas we have considered that majority or every man makes use of mathematics one way or the other. Even the, 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 the person you think is not normal in the street, if you give him money, you go and buy. That's, that's making use of making use of money in transaction. Then, limited concerns were shown by the teachers. They, they, they felt proud that they are the teachers of the course, strong, hard subjects, and they were, con they were contented with it. Now, let's consider the mathematics curriculum uh, development in the world perspective. See, the issue of uh, curriculum development in mathematics was a global concern that affected many countries of the world, especially in the early 1950s. Specifically in 1951, the Russian launched Sputnik 1 spacecraft, and it this one this is the, the, the ego of the Western world and the super world powers that it was least expected. Since then, there was a modernization and reconsideration of the type of mathematics that was being studied in schools nationwide, worldwide as well. Yeah, there was a need to revise and change the type of uh, mathematics being studied. Now, to know more about mathematics curriculum, innovations and implications for instructional delivery in Nigeria, you consider this site given to you. The aims and goals of mathematics teaching in Nigeria. What are aims? What are goals? Aims are intentions, aspirations, desires, and visions with the inclination or willingness to achieve them. Aims are not quantifiable and may not be achievable until they are translated to goals and objectives. Sources of aims is majorly from the thinkers of the society. They have a vision of what the society should be and what can bring them to reality. The thinkers are stakeholders of the society, the, 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 the learned people, the philosophers of the society. What do they want to achieve with education? What do they want to achieve with mathematics? So aims are translated to goals and goals translated to objectives, making it achievable. Now, goals are more definite and specific, unlike aims. Aims are stream in uh, the, the aims are stream line into goals. Goals may be immediate, may be intermediate, or long term specific. The goals of mathematics station in Nigeria was fashioned out at first in nineteen seventy seven and documented in the national policy in education. This was for primary and secondary school levels, and they have it as number one, to generate interest in mathematics and to provide a solid foundation for everyday living, and two, to develop compositional skills and foster the desire and ability to be accurate to a degree relevant to the problem at hand, and three, to develop precise logical and abstract thinking. Four, to develop ability to recognize problems and solve them with related mathematical knowledge. Then five, to provide necessary mathematical background for further education. And then to stimulate and encourage creativity. And let's consider objectives in mathematics teaching. What are behavioral 
objectives. In other words, are specific objectives, performance objectives, call it instruction objectives. They all mean the same thing. Behavioral objectives, specific objectives, performance objectives, of instructional objectives. So, this behavioral objective is the intended learning outcome during a lesson. It is intended. You have not achieved it, but you set it with the hope that when you give your teaching as a treatment, you now re-examine in form of evaluation if it has been achieved. So it is intended. That keyword intended is very, very important. Intended learning outcome during a lesson. That's the behavioral objective. So it's important to set our objectives before each lesson prepare in our lesson notes. It's very essential for you to set out clearly a definite objective you want to achieve your lesson. Now, if you write out a very good behavioral objective, there should be these five components of it. The first aspect is under what condition? What condition? What condition? Then two, who? That is the audience. Three, what behavior are you expecting? What behavior? Then four, what result? And five, to what extent? That's what you can call the, the condition, the criteria, the performance and the product. So, if you look at this statement, for instance, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to compute sum of three numbers within one to one thousand to three decimal places. To three decimal places. So, that means at the end of this lesson, end of that's the condition provided that you have given the lesson at the end of the lesson then what are the information the hint that you give that's the condition what are the things prepare made ready to enhance achievement that's the condition then you see the student that's the audience the target audience that's the who then the behavior, the, the behavior that's the for the 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 the, 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 the activity should be able to compute some of the numbers in performance. The result, that's the product, 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 within one to one thousand. Then the last segment is the criteria to three decimal places, the, the, to what degree of performance, to what extent. So, so when you set your behavioral objective, is you have this segment or element or part to make it well defined. So in the summary, we say the condition, the criteria, the performance, the product, and the person. In the form of summary. Now let's consider reasons for a mathematics teacher to have behavioral objectives in your lesson. The reason you as a mathematics teacher, why do you think you need to set or write in your lesson notes your behavioral objectives? But one, give direction to the lesson, make you to be focused in the lesson, then it enhances your evaluation. At the end of the day, you target your evaluation towards the set objectives. The safe time also, you are well focused, you are directed. You have a vision, you have a focus, you will have a destination that you are going and your focus is the objective. Now, to provide, uh, I mean, it, it gives you guidance and make you to avoid errors and mistakes. Is it? And in mathematics class, if you if, if you if you if you don't don't do that, you may be distracted, may be distracted, and be diverted. Then, to prevent distraction, also to prevent distraction, to guide in the teaching methods to choose. You set your objective. What method will lead you to achievement of that objective? 
again is to guide in the selection of instructional material that you are going to use for your lesson. Let's consider now types of behavioral objectives. The classification of behavioral objectives is an attempt to arrange instructional objectives in behavioral classification in which we start from simple behavior outcome to complex or abstract learning outcome. Bloom and his research team in 1956 did this class classification of objectives into three. And these are the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. Further, Bloom's in 1956 considered cognitive domain and put it into three levels or stages. We have the knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. In this case, evaluation is the peak, the highest level of test, and this at the cognitive level. The first three is the lower level, and the last three is the higher level. And most cases, at our primary and uh, junior secondary school, we use, in most cases, the lower level of uh, this uh, classification. We also consider Anderson and Kratworthy in 2001 felt that there's a need to make use of you know a form of verb that will be much more active and so for our consciousness that it has to be active he said okay knowledge should be called remembering comprehension should be called understanding then application is applying then analysis is called analyzing then the fifth one is considered to be evaluation and the highest he says should be creating so creating creating that means creativity it is very necessary should be the climax of all things any theory anything whatsoever you learn yeah when you go out there what can you make out of it and can you adopt or adapt it to bring out uh, a, 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 a novel uh, ingenuity and uh, you know, an appreciable end. For you to have a well-defined behavior objectives that is measurable, you need to use some verbs. Some verbs are very essential. Now, let's start at knowledge level. Relevant objective is like words like, you know, uh, at, at this level, knowledge level, some verbs that are relevant that you use, like state, list, mention, define, and so on. Those are relevant verbs for this level. And these are the verbs that, um, and some, there are a lot more, there are a lot more, there are a lot more, recognize and arrange and so on. So, comprehension level, you have uh, words, like, words like explain, translate, describe, report. And at the application level, you have words like apply, use, sketch. So, construct. Then, at analysis level, so successful student will examine the learned information critically at this stage. So, you have analyze, differentiate, inspect, categorize. They are the synthesis level. The level student will uh, create new models using the learned information. 
So develop, devise, compose, plan, formulate. Lastly, at the evaluation level, the successful student we assess or judge the value of land information. So at that level, you are able to pass judgment on your experience, what you have learned. So you have like review, report, argue, interpret, and evaluate. Now, and a lot more. Then, finally, I want to let you know that there are some verbs you must not use. Commonly, the ones you should even use is the verb like know. Then understand. Why the restriction on these verbs? If somebody knows, how do you know that he knows? How do you know that he knows? So there must be action that follows it. That's why there must be a substitute, a verb that makes you to know that he knows. So you don't use the word, the verb he knows. No. Or you don't use the verb understand and so on. Use measurable verb because these are not actually measurable. So, bye. <music>